Hello, welcome to the LaRouche Pack Weekly Report for June the 16th, 2010. I'm John Hofel, and with me today is EIR Counterintelligence Director Jeff Steinberg. Uh, Jeff, how are you today? I'm good, John. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. So the, uh, the big thing going on these days is the complete blowout of the financial system. Right. Uh, you, have, you have Europe just completely collapsing. The, uh, the Spanish crisis, which, you know, we identified early on that when, what, when people were talking about Greece, the real problem was going to be Spain. Now you have, you know, the Financial Times today devotes a whole spread to the problems in Spain. Right. So th this whole thing is just completely melting down. And, of course, if you're talking about Spain, you're talking about Banco Santander first and foremost, and that gets us into the larger network that you've been looking at extensively, namely the Inter Alpha Group, the Rothschild family apparatus. So this, this is not even a crisis that's localized to Spain. It, if, it's, if it's about Spanish banking, it's about the inner circle of the city of London financial apparatus. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're facing, you know, the, the whole global financial system, the British imperial monetary system is, is basically gone at this point. And they're holding it together by illusions and perceptions. Right. But, you know, uh, Lyndon LaRouche has been saying lately that we're at a point right now where before the end of June or into early July, this whole thing could come completely crashing down. That we could actually see a disintegration of the system uh, in a way that is not just a, another bank failing or something like that, but the whole thing simply shutting down and completely unable to function. And I think, John, there's two other dimensions uh, that uh, will get to be really significant. You have a chain reaction collapse of the financial system, and this is going to cause a number of governments to fall. Right now, I know I had a conversation with, uh, with both Lyndon LaRouche and Helga LaRouche yesterday, and they're looking at the situation in Germany with the Merkel government as being extremely precarious. There was a report out in one of the British papers, probably the Daily Telegraph, just in the last 48 hours, saying that uh, the Merkel government could collapse because there is such opposition to the idea that Germany is going to be the checkbook of last resort for bailing out all of Europe. And so the Spanish crisis, which is orders of magnitude larger than the Greek situation, uh, if that erupts, then this is going to create an existential issue for Merkel. Will Germany continue to commit to bail out all of Europe at the expense of more and more brutal austerity? Uh, can Merkel hold the line on that? If Germany says we're not going to bail out the entire European Monetary Union, 16 countries, then uh, the euro is finished. There's a groundswell in Germany to go back to the uh, Deutsche Mark. And uh, frankly, a lot of people are holding their breath to see what happens when the German constitutional court rules on a lawsuit saying that the entire bailout is illegal. It's a violation of the Maastricht Treaty and the Lisbon Treaty and everything else. So you've got political repercussions that are massive. And on top of that, you've got a mass strike process that has clearly taken grip in both the United States and in Europe. So you now have a factor of a popular revolt against these policies that is going to add to the turmoil that we're seeing already playing out and potentially blowing up altogether in the next four weeks or so. Yeah, because just as if we've seen here, when you talk about bailing out the European nations, Germany asked to once again sacrifice itself. You're talking about actually bailing out the British imperial banking system. Right. You're talking about bailing out the big banks because the governments don't get the money. The money goes to the banks to exactly. pay off the government's debt. It's a pass through. <laughs> it's a pass through. So you're using the governments in a sense the same way that uh, the Federal Reserve used AIG. In fact, let me just say that the interesting case in terms of Germany is that um, the whole notion of the Greek bailout, as unpopular as it is among the German population, uh, Merkel made a calculated political decision that it was far better to say that you're bailing out another European country 
than to admit that you're actually bailing out the same banks that were the big recipients of the bailout two years ago or less. And so uh, they know perfectly well that the money is going directly to bailing out a bunch of too big to fail banks that should be put through bankruptcy reorganization if there's any chance of avoiding a total catastrophic collapse. And that, that as you said, is, is coming up really fast. Uh, Lyndon LaRouche says mid-July is the most likely outer limit for when you're going to get some major detonation that's going to just reverberate around the entire international financial system. Yeah, I mean, it's, in a sense, what's going on with the financial system is reminiscent of about what appears to be going on with this BP well. Yeah. Which is <clears throat> that below the surface, in this case with the well, below the ocean floor, the well is completely fractured and is beginning to break down. And the leaks are everywhere. And that's the same thing that's going on with the financial system. In a sense, they're similar because the, the damage is occurring at a rapid pace. It's the, the damage is growing. The thing is turning upon itself. Mm -hmm. And it's not really visible. You, we see like the banking crisis. We see the slicks on the water. You know, we see every now and then uh, somebody will get covered with oil. Right. But that the real crisis is hidden from view. Right. But that it's still there. And that's what we're seeing in coming up in this June to July period. That, in fact, that we've, we've reached the point where they may very well not be able to hold this thing together any longer, no matter what they try. Right. You know, the political consequences that we were discussing just a few moments ago, particularly the Germany case, uh, and now there's a, a move underway in France to impeach Sarkozy over his complicity in this disastrous policy failure. Um, yesterday night, uh, President Obama gave his first Oval Office address to the nation, and uh, even the liberal commentators have panned it absolutely. And uh, talk about a, a disconnect from reality. I think his major comment about the disaster in the Gulf of Mexico, which was the ostensible topic of his uh, address, uh, was things will be better next year and everybody should pray. I mean, it was, it was such a complete and abject failure of leadership that it puts the issue of Obama's impeachment much more squarely on the table, just because people have concluded that as badly as George W. Bush bungled Katrina, he handled it a thousand times better than Obama's bungling of this situation in the Gulf, basically showing his true colors by deferring to British Petroleum and basically refusing to take any kind of presidential leadership in this. And now, as you say, we don't even know the magnitude of what's been unleashed here and how big this crisis is going to prove to be. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you know what BP is by this point. I mean, it, it, everybody knows their criminal operation. Right. And that they have, they have blown it big time. Mm -hmm. All right. The question is, what is the response of the government going to be? Right. And this is where the Obama administration has failed miserably. You know, Obama has said, we don't want to hurt BP. We're not, we're not interested in hurting BP. Well, we're not really interested in hurting BP. We want to take them over. Right. 